Tinkercad Challenge Acceptors. Today I'm going to show you this month of October's challenge, which is going to be create a jack-o'-lantern. Before I begin though, I want to make sure everyone's at the same place. I made an intro to Tinkercad video. I hope you've all checked it out before watching this. If you do want to check out that video, feel free to. Uh, this challenge isn't going to go anywhere for a month. So you're welcome to come back and revisit if you feel kind of stuck maybe, or maybe you even have a question for me and I can help you figure out what you should do with your challenge thing. So you see here, this is my main page. This page I'm at now, this is the account page. So in this section right here, it says 3D designs. This is some other things I have created or played around with. Some of these are even the learned or the project designs if you see anything here maybe you thought okay well i didn't do anything except some learn designs and they should be in the section so first thing i want to make sure that you're all registered for this class so i know who is part of the challenge who wants to their stuff printed and i would like you all to join the class if you can this is just a way for me to know once again who's registered who's ready to print because if I see your designs, I could just take the, the files and just print them right from here. So you don't have to worry about sending me anything. And once you're done, email me at SSLIWA at newlinuxlibrary.org and I will put you in the queue to get your Jack Lantern printed. Now remember, this is no cost to you. If you are registered for the challenge, you won't have to pay for this but anything other than what the month is required, they're going to be extra, okay? Say if you don't even do the Jack Lantern challenge and you want to do another challenge, and then you want decide, okay, well, I want to print out something else that doesn't, that necessarily is not part of the October challenge. I cannot do that. That's, this is strictly for Tinkercad challenge of the month. Maybe you made two of next month's challenge and then you can only choose one, okay? And same with, maybe you created five jack-o'-lanterns. Well, remember you can only choose one. We're not gonna make actual size jack-o'-lanterns. It's gonna do simple des desktop objects. And maybe you wanna bring to school, you can fit in your backpack. <laughs> what I want to do is I wanna open up a new 3D design. So once again, click on your, click on your profile icon, click on new and it This is what Tinkercad is going to look like when you start a new project. This is the work plane. Before we start anything, what I want you to get a handle of is changing the name. So the way you can change the name is click up here. And I already changed it. I put October Child's Jack-O-Lantern. You can change it to whatever uh, name you want to do, Jack-O-Lantern or just October. It's a good way to keep your projects organized if you ever want to go back or Maybe uh, if you need help and I can look it up for you, it's a lot easier just to have a clear naming device instead of what the Tinkercad naming convention they give you is something very random. Work plane, and we're gonna go to basic shapes. And here you're going to see a sphere. So we're clicking the sphere. I'm clicking and I'm dragging onto the work plane. Now I'm gonna raise the steps of the sphere. This will give it a lot more to find look as opposed to what it was it's very it's more boxy so say if I did it like that you could see it just gives it a very not s spherical shape and the more steps you add the more defined it is so right now it's at 20 by I'm clicking the black uh, the black squares and these tell you the the length and width so right now I am going to change it to 15 and that's going to make it like a very egg shape Looking on the side here. And then I also want to squish it to be a 15, but we're going to leave the height as a 20. So I'm clicking on the front square, change it as a 15. So yes, right now it's a very egg-shaped looking design. Now we're going to duplicate it. And the way I, you can hold Option and drag it. And I'm going to use the keyboard arrow keys just to pull it apart. Uh, you kind of want to make it look like it's like the half of an apple or a Venn diagram. 
but I want to make sure that it's not too pulled apart because it's going to, this is going to be your pumpkin body. So it's going to look a little strange if you have it too pulled apart. So right now up here is group. So you can either hit control G or you can just hit this button and it's going to group these two. Looks like I had an extra one. So I'm going to delete that. Now we're going to duplicate it again. So option and then rotate it. So you're going to rotate the duplicate to negative 90 or 90 degrees. Okay, so it looks like it's, uh, to me it looks like a melon or some really strange, but you can start seeing how it's going to look very pumpkin shaped. And we're going to group this section as well. Once again, duplicate, and we're going to rotate the duplicate to, oh, I have a couple of duplicates here. I don't, make sure you only have one duplicate, not many. So we're going to rotate to a 45 or negative 45, whichever, whichever it gives you the option to. Okay, awesome. So this is going to be, I'm going to group this, and this is the body of the pumpkin. So you can see it's pumpkin shape. Okay, we're not done yet. We're going to add a stem. Generators. Basic shapes, we're going to go up and we're going to go to shape generators. I'm pulling this shape, it's called SVG Revolver. And I'm going to show you what you can do with this. So you can actually make it shorter. So this is one way to make a stem. I, th I thought it would be a little bit easier. And I'm going to also change the size a little bit because right now the stem's pretty big. Okay, I think that would be a good size. Now, to raise up any object, you have to click this up arrow. And I'm going to try to pull it over and match it to the pumpkin. Now we have to rotate it again. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And it should, you can also, uh, if you ever, you can also click into the box and uh, type it in. That's a little easier. So I'm still adjusting it. And if you want to move it just a little bit, use your keyboard arrows. That Those help a lot when it comes to all this. All right, so this is going to be my stem. That's my pumpkin. Perfect. Okay, so I have my stem. Um, I just remembered something, though. We're going to have to duplicate the... In we're going to have to make the interior of the pumpkin to cut out, eventually, it's going to be the inside jack-o'-lantern piece. Okay, so the way you do want to do that is uh, duplicate again. So I just command C. Now this is going to be probably the more tricky part of this because you're going to have to make sure the inside and the outside, or the inside is center to the outside. So one way I figured out would be an easier way to do this, I clicked on the shape. And up here you can click hole and that makes it transparent. So let me see, um, shape size wise, so we have 23 by 23. So let's change this. So I'm clicking on the white corner. We're gonna do, um, let's do 19 by 19 and see how that looks. Oh. Let's see what the top is, the top is 20. So I'm gonna pull it down to about 18. We'll see how that looks. So now I'm using my arrow keys to move in. Matches up as best I can. You always have the square up here to measure your, move your camera too. Actually, so then you want to change this one. You want to make this a hole. And actually it might help a little bit more to see them how they work together. So yeah, I do have, uh, if it does do this, you can snap grid, you can always turn that off and that will give you a better way to center everything. Okay. Okay, so I think that's gonna be as good as we're gonna get. Okay. So now you wanna click on the outside and you wanna make sure it's solid again. Now let's move the stem back down. Okay, I'm going to highlight all of it and we're going to group it. Okay, so you see up here, make sure you have all three shapes. Group. Now what this does, because the interior one is a hole, 
it's going to actually cut out the inside of the shape. Okay, so this is how your pumpkin is formed. Another way to know that all of these are grouped is that they all turn into one color. So I'm going to change this to orange. Remember when you 3D print it, it will be whatever color you choose, okay? So even though you have it orange, if you want a different color, that's fine. Now it's time to make the face. And I'm going to use basic shapes for this, but you have a whole lot of shapes that you can see and play around with in the shapes library if you want to use something different. But I'm going to start off with the eyes. So it's called a roof shape. I'm going to resize it down, um, let me do eight, yeah, and then I'm going to squish it in a little bit to a five. Now I like to rotate around my object to see what's going on. Just click the square up here if you want to see different sides. I guess I'm making it more hard for myself, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to duplicate this shape. And perfect. So remember, you want to try to make it so that the shapes go into the hole in the middle, right? So I was trying to make sure that these are long enough to get there. I'm going to group them. All right, and I'm going to click hole. Whatever you select as a hole, you should be able to see into the pumpkin. And you want to group it together. So these eyes, there we go. So you see, I can see, I can start to see inside the jack-o-lantern. If I move my camera around. So remember, anytime you want to create a hole out of something, you have to group it together with the solid object or solid shape that you're making it out of. I think I'm gonna select this guy, the polygon. I want to rotate it forward, so I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, and I want to also change the sides. Yeah, let's do this. So right now I have an octagon shape. I'm going to take this, this is the square hole shape, or the box shape, and I'm going to make it long enough so it's going to cover the top half of the octagon. Remember, got to group everything and once that's done, it's going to cut it out. All right, so now I have the top half of the mouth. And I'm going to add in. Now I'm going to take some box shapes. I'm going to make the teeth. Now this box shape is huge, so remember, we always resize it. And it's really up to you how you want it to look. You can look at it as it's your jack-o'-lantern. So Play around and see what you think looks best for it. Or if you want to follow me directly, you can too. I think about making sure that they're all um, overlapping each other the way it should be. Okay, now I want to group all of this. So I'm selecting all the boxes, all the boxes and make them holes. Group it. There you go, got my mouth. Definitely gonna resize that. Once again, I'm using my keyboard keys to make sure that it fits. I'm still gonna resize it a little more. It's still kind of big. Now remember, you also wanna make sure that you can see the pieces inside. So I do see the pieces inside. And also making sure I don't have them going out through the other side. I'm going, to select, I'm going to select this, make it a hole, and so you can already see that it cut out. it's going to cut out that shape, and then we're going to group them, and there we go. Awesome. So mouth is a little crooked, but I'm going to just leave it so we can move on to the next step. So this is my jack-o'-lantern. Now we're going to move on to a fun part. Um, you can have your jack-o'-lantern up to 50... So if you want to change the size, I'm going to change it to 50 by 50, and this should be about two inches tall. We're going to actually cut this so that the top the top portion can open up and you can put stuff in there. 
If you want to put like a tiny little light, you can put, store some candy and hide it. <laughs> so once again, we're going to do the box shape. With this box shape, we want to make sure it completely covers the jack-o'-lantern. So I did make it 50 by 50. So I'm going to do 50 here, 50 here. And I don't want to do 50 for the top. I'm going to see if I can, let's do a 35. Yeah, I think that's going to be good. Okay. I'm not going to group it just yet. I'm going to duplicate this. Moving it over. Now, when you duplicate, you want to make sure that one box is covering the bottom and the other box is covering the top. So I want to make sure I line up these boxes perfectly. Now we're going to group them. Group this one and group. So it looks like I'm going to move this guy. I'm going to move this one over. This one group fine. This one, it looked like the box moved. So I'm going to ungroup it and you see that's that's the problem there. So the box wasn't covering the back end of the pumpkin. So I just enlarged a little bit. I did not make the, um, I did not move the box per se up and down. I just enlarged it. So keep that in mind. Do not move it up and down or otherwise you're going to have to ungroup this and make sure they match. All right. Grouping this again, and it should be perfect. Excellent. So you see, you can see inside of the jack-o'-lantern. And now we're going to do one last step so that you can, when you put something in the jack-o'-lantern, it holds pretty well. So I'm not sure. So what I'm doing is I'm using the cylinder shape and I'm trying to get the cylinder the, to match inside the interior of the jack-o'-lantern. Okay. So that should be perfect. Now for me, I like to make sure that um, this, there's more sides just to give it a nice round shape. So that would match the pumpkin a, a little better. Now I'm going to move this cylinder over to the pumpkin top. Obviously it's way too big, but I want to match it up. Okay. And every time you want to zoom in or center on something, you can do this button. It helps out a lot when you have a lot of shapes going on. So the one nice thing about the top and the bottom, it's kind of hard to tell from this. So how I was using the pumpkin and kind of like making sure the cylinder is in the middle of all the points, you can do that the same here. Okay, I'm trying to make sure it's as close as I can get it because I want my cylinder piece to fit really well into the pumpkin. Actually, I'm just going to pull this up so then I can push down on the top a little bit because I'm having... And I'm just going to group this and... Move it down. So you see you can move it straight down to zero. So it lets you know where it's at placed on the plane. Okay. So this is a jack-o'-lantern, everyone. But whenever you are done, please email me that you are ready for a print. And we will get these done for you as soon as they are finished. And remember, you have up until the end of, a, of this month, October 31st to complete this challenge and to turn in and we will continue printing on past the post date so if you do turn in on that on October 31st we will still honor the print okay. so thank you all for watching I hope I hope this helps you out to figure out what you can do for your jack-o'-lantern and I, I can't wait to see what you all come up with <laughs>